Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called the Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. This is not necessarily a deep dive, but basically just something I wanted to kind of give my commentary on and my opinion on if you care to listen. Um, I have spoken about this with Fancy Maselli. I will tag a video I did with Fancy down in the description box below, as well as Fancy's channel, The Good Wives Network. For, for further resources into this. And this is involving Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Um, I've done a couple of videos on her. As many of you guys know, my opinion absolutely has changed on her. I went from believing that she was a victim of ABUSC. I believed the propaganda that was put out about the situation. And then after listening to what Fancy Maselli had found in her research, I now think that was what I just said, it was propaganda, fake news. And I think this girl basically got away with unaliving her own mother. And um, since she's been out, there's been uh, a lot of cringy stuff on social media. Um, a lot of her true personality seems to be coming out through social media. And it is definitely a train wreck. And I know most of us cannot stop watching this. Now, I had spoken to Fancy, and I don't know if I said this on air or off air, but I know I did comment on her channel about this. In one of the uh, docu-series, I think it was Prison Confessions, or maybe it was multiple ones, I can't remember, she spoke a lot about how her mother, when they were living in Missouri, took a cow tongue and some other stuff and put it in a jar and buried it in the backyard. So as, as gypsy claims, so that gypsy and this guy, Dan could never be together. Now this started kind of a domino effect. I noticed from a lot of content creators and it was gobsmacking to me. Absolutely gobsmacking. I even mentioned one of my favorite channels, which is hidden true crime, uh, Dr. John and Laura, I love their work, but I think Dr. John got this absolutely 100% wrong in his analysis because he focused, when he did the analysis on Gypsy Rose, he focused a lot on her talking about her mother's obsession with witchcraft. And this was kind of a slap. His analysis, I don't think he meant it. I don't think he understands. I just don't think he knows the Southern culture because for, for a Southerner's perspective, this was a nothing burger. And I don't think Dr. John actually understands that. So for people in the South, like that means nothing. I've said this over and over and over and over and over and over and over again on my channel. Part of the reason why I opened up my channel and called it Esoteric Atlanta is because I love being from the South because the South is effing eccentric. We are eccentric people down here. And voodoo and magic and witchcraft is prominent all over the south people often think new orleans is like the hub for this stuff it's not and we're going to talk a little bit about because that's where gypsy rose is from we're going to talk a little bit about marie laveau all that kind of stuff but voodoo and witchcraft and magic i mean i think that's what it really is is magic is all over the deep south there is not one place that has more magic than another. It's just New Orleans makes a market off of it, which is fine. I mean, get your dollars, like do what you gotta do to, to keep the tourists coming in. 
we're looking at a, a, a demographic, and when I mean this, the deep South, I'm not, the South is like West Virginia, Virginia, South, Kentucky, Missouri, these are all kind of the South. The deep South, however, is South Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, where I live, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. It's a very specific part of the South. As many of you know, my mother is from Charleston, South Carolina. That's the low country. There's just as much hoodoo, voodoo root workers in Charleston as there are in New Orleans and elsewhere. So I grew up with this. I am, am very, very, I, I defend voodoo a lot, a lot. You guys have probably seen that. I did a whole series on New Orleans and Savannah, Georgia. I will tag those playlists down below. And I am very, very, very firm on defending the faith of voodoo. I'm very big on talking about how Hollywood has blown it up. Okay. With that being said, the reason why I defend it so much is, it, is it, it's, it's because it's a part of our culture down here. It doesn't matter what your race is. It doesn't matter because the eccentric, the culture of the South at this point in 2024 has snowballed into a collision of voodoo, Protestant Christianity, and in New Orleans Catholicism, and Native American practices. Let me explain something to you guys historically. And maybe, Dr. John, if you hear this, maybe this will give you a different perspective. Now, if our history is correct, the history that they've taught us is correct, we know that there was slavery down here in the South. Unfortunately, that was a reality of the South. For many generations, in aristocratic white plantations or Southern homes, when a baby was born, the baby of the white family was immediately handed to a black woman. We even had nursemaids, meaning that the mother, the biological mother, the white mother, most likely in most cases did not even feed her own child. The nursemaid did. So when we're looking at the relationship between these little white children, white babies, and their nannies they're black they were slaves so they weren't they were forced to be there but they that doesn't negate that there was a bond between the two of them i don't care what race you are when you're handed an infant most people who are not psychopaths want to protect and love that infant so there created a bond between white children and their black nannies a very loving bond and this snowballed over time so when these children were growing up I mean so much so that if a white child so let's say a five-year-old were to fall and skin his knee and wants that comfort of a caregiver he wasn't going to be running to his mother more than likely that child would be running to the black lady who gave him love and comfort okay and so these women over history would teach these children African faiths. So these white children were learning African faiths from their caregivers. And then the caregivers were learning and, and seeing the um, Christian, the mostly Protestant in the deep South Louisiana is the only Catholic. So it was kind of starting to combine itself into a, its own thing. And again, this happened, I'm gonna read some from this book about M Marie Laveau. This also happened in New Orleans with Catholicism and voodoo. So even, even when I was a child, of course, I was born in 1983. Obviously, thank God, there was no slavery back in that time. But as a child, I would go and spend my summers with my cousins, my first cousins, in the low country of South Carolina on the beach. And we always had a, a, a nanny, a babysitter. And for most of my childhood, it was a black lady. Until eventually, I think she, I can't remember if she passed away or retired. It ended up being a white lady after that. But nonetheless, when I was really, really little, even for me, this woman would do things for us. Like I learned at a very young age, like she would come and tuck us in at night if our parents were out. And she would put a broom in the corner of our bedroom with the bristles facing up. That was to protect us while we were sleeping from hags. I'll explain hags in a very, in a different, that's a different video. So even for my generation, we were being taught things as children, magic from the voodoo faith. 
And so this is this is common in the South. And so that's what I hope Dr. John can maybe try to understand. And maybe this is something people who are not from the South will never fully understand because it's so ingrained in our, it's, it's ingrained over generations in our DNA. I've spoken before that here in the South, it's super humid too. And so it, it kind of lends itself, that humidity lends itself, the thickness in the air to, to the, the land itself having its own personality. And I think that's why ghosts are more prevalent down here is because you can literally see them better because it's humid and the air is thick. So when Gypsy talks about this with her mom, it didn't even phase me. Because that is that just happens. I got jars buried in the backyard. I got protection salt here. I know some stuff. So does everybody else who's from the South. Um, in the, the, the uh, doll episode I released on Monday, I talked about the kitchen witch. How in this particular research, it's saying kitchen, kitchen, kitchen witches were dolls you put in your kitchen to keep out bad spirits. But down here in the South, I had always learned that a kitchen witch was somebody who wasn't like a full-time like witch, but just did, did some things, right? Like knew how to like do some stuff, put some salt down, protect people, all that kind of stuff. So when this became a bigger deal, when, when the whole jar tongues, cow's tongue jar story kind of blew up for people outside of the South, it was gobsmacking to me because I was like, you guys are being, at that point I was like, you're being, this is not, this is normal. This is normal. And I actually kind of fault, like, I, in one of the documentaries, her cousin, Bobby, also speaks about Dee Dee, his, I guess his aunt, owning a tarantula and being into witchcraft. And I'm like, dude, dude, you're from the South. Did somebody pay you? Did somebody pay you to say that? Because chances are your mama was also doing that too chances are your sisters were also doing that too chances are you've done some stuff too in fact it is it is weirder for someone to be from the south and not be dabbling in that kind of stuff that's actually stranger okay and i will fight to the nail in my life to protect this culture this is an, a beautiful melting pot of all these different faiths coming together. And in, in every faith, you have to decide whether you're going to practice for the light or practice for the darkness. Things that I do are for the light. I've spoken about, we're going to get to it in a minute, but I have spoken about over time on my channel, the dangers of doing something like a love spell. I heard another person refer to love spells as kidnapping, and that is exactly what they are. If you're going to be doing spell work and you want to do it for the light, you don't do anything that infringes on somebody else's free will choice. Because magic is real. Magic involves the elements of nature. You, yourself, are made up of the elements of nature. And so you want to be careful. With great power comes great responsibility. Every person that I know who practices regularly only practices for the light. They will not do certain things that could potentially harm another person. So I think everybody's gotten this wrong with Gypsy's mom. Now, especially you, Dr. John, I think you got this wrong. And I think it's, I think it's just simply because you don't understand Southern culture. Um, I don't think Dee Dee Blanchard was any more obsessed with witchcraft than I am, or my friends are. Jessica Jones is, the cryptid huntress, or Angie Tillman, the fickle chickle, you know, my southern friends that come on. This is just a part of what we do down here. And I would really ask that people outside of the South don't, please don't degrade the South by making it something it's not. We work really hard down here in the South to come together in, human, in, um, human in our humanity, I mean, Atlanta is a city too busy to hate. And I think it's beautiful that I can work with my black friend who practices myself. Like, I think it's beautiful that this is a common bond that we all have down here in the South. So please, you guys, if you are not from the South, please don't destroy our culture down here by turning that story with Dee Dee Blanchard into something that it is not. So with that being said, I don't, I do want to kind of talk a little bit though with the black magic and the white magic with Gypsy. 
All right. So I'm going to read just something from um, Marie Laveau Voodoo Grimoire by Denise Alvarado. I will put a link to this book down in the description box below. So she talks about Louisiana voodoo. And this is where the definition of voodoo is going so you guys understand what the definition of voodoo actually is. So she says, Louisiana voodoo is the umbrella term for several forms of voodoo in Louisiana. So there's multiple forms, okay? There's multiple forms of different variations of voodoo, and Louisiana voodoo is very specific because it combines Catholicism, whereas the rest of the voodoo in the South combines Protestantism. All right, it refers to a folk religion more likely to be practiced by individuals or families than by communities. The most well-known form of voodoo in Louisiana is New Orleans voodoo. The communal aspect of voodoo, voodoo is observed in New Orleans where public ceremonies, dances, drum circles, baptisms, and other events occur. New Orleans is where a concentration of practitioners reside and where a thriving tourist trade exists. So there are publicly known voodoo houses and temples. I suspect just as many or even more pract practitioners remain underground. They prefer to stay out of the public eye due to the stigma attached to voodoo and the safety issues that can arise when a person is known to be a voodooist. A young religion that emerged from the transatlantic slave trade, New Orleans voodoo developed throughout the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries in Louisiana. Its foundational structure is identical to West African voodoo in important ways. It is a matriarchal tradition whereby women dominate the clergy. And though it may be the wild child of African voodoo, it is no less legitimate or complex. And voodoo is actually the correct way to say it, voodoo. I will say voodoo because that's what most people know it as. That's what Hollywood created it to be. But the, the proper term is voodoo. West African voodoo cosmology centers around spirits in divine energies that govern the earth. These energies and spirits are called voodoo, meaning spirit. So that's basically what voodoo or voodoo means is spirits. You're just working with spirits. And every living thing has a spiritual energy, a life force, a prana, a chi. The gov they govern nature and humanity and consist of major deities, from a sky pantheon of thunder, lightning, and rain to the water spirits who dwell in lakes, rivers, and seas, to nature spirits associated with rock hills, winds, animals, and trees. New Orleans voodoo is a religious system that acknowledges the existence of one ultimate God while not denying the existence of other deities. Okay? So, kind of like how... In Christianity, we have angels we call upon. And we've been talking a lot about the saints recently, which I have issues with sainthood. But we do know there are angels and there are other just elements of life force, basically. And that is definitely where the New Orleans voodoo kind of separates itself from like the us down here in the southeast. So let's talk a little bit about gypsy. Now, this is all speculation for me. This is not fact. This is just my opinion and what I have observed. Now, I don't know if it's because Gypsy was basically raised as an only child. I know she has half siblings, but the way she behaves is definitely, I'm not bashing only children. I have a lot of friends who are only, who are onlys, but the way she behaves is like an only child who definitely has been spoiled and knows no boundaries. Like she has no boundaries with other people. I think this is pretty evident. I think that's, she's very selfish, very self-centered. And it's almost like it's the gypsy show and we're all just extras in her little world. And I don't think that gypsy herself realizes that she's not as clever as she thinks she is. Yes, she tricked the system. She got out of prison, in my opinion, earlier than she should have. Um, but I do think that justice comes in many different ways forms and i think that we are seeing some justice she is losing brand deals she is you know she's trying to make a living being an influencer i don't know what she's going to influence though because what has she actually done with her life I mean, there's nothing extraordinary that she's done except for un unaliving her mother you know there's nothing that she can teach us versus except for felony acts that most of us don't want to be a part of but i also think that gypsy knows a lot about voodoo i think she actually does practice a lot of witchcraft this is my opinion this is just my speculation guys i don't know this is fact this is my opinion we are allowed to have opinions and i but i don't think she realizes 
that us from the South, especially as women from the South, we know what she's doing. We see what she's doing and it ain't cool. There was a video a few weeks back now that she released and guys, her videos, in my opinion, they're not that great. They're kind of boring. Like her vlog videos, they're not edited well. There's no creativity. I don't think the girl's creative at all. You know, and I just, there's nothing interesting really about her life that's worth watching, but people do watch it because it's a freaking train wreck. You know, she's such a, in my opinion, she's showing signs of being a psychotic narcissist. Now, she is from New Orleans. So the fact that she's obviously, in my opinion, in my speculation, she's doing magic, that's not shocking to me. I don't care. Like, you're a southern girl gypsy like from one southern girl to another southern girl i don't care that you're doing magic because I, I do it we're all doing it you know but what's fascinating is the magic that you te seem to be practicing there's a video as i was saying there's a video she released a couple of weeks ago where she was making her fiance spaghetti now this kind of puzzled people because even for someone like me i don't cook I don't cook. I just recently learned how to boil a, boil an egg, but I know how to make spaghetti. Most people know how to make spaghetti. Like it's the easiest meal to make. So the fact that she was filming herself making the spaghetti was pretty peculiar to a lot of people, especially since she had like a recipe book. Like who needs a recipe book for spaghetti? You know, you don't need a recipe book for spaghetti. And she, she cooks and then she goes off into her bedroom and she starts crying fake tears, by the way, obviously very fake tears about how much she loves Ken, her new fiance, allegedly her baby daddy. There's speculation about that, though. And I first watched this video and I was like, girl, you didn't just do what I think you just did. Like, did you like you didn't just. I think I know why you made spaghetti, but I didn't say anything because I thought maybe this is just me assuming, just knowing what I know about certain love spells and binding spells. So I just kind of kept it to myself. And then I was on TikTok, because you guys know, follow me on TikTok. If you're not on TikTok, I just opened up a TikTok channel, so I'm still learning TikTok. But I got caught down this rabbit hole of Gypsy Rose. And all of a sudden, these other females who are also from the South their videos started popping up where they were basically saying, Gypsy, what's in the spaghetti? And I was like, damn, I'm not the only female from the South that thought this was weird. I'm not the only female. So see, Gypsy, you can't fool the other women of the South because I think we know what's in that spaghetti. Now, again, this is just speculation. All that could be in the spaghetti is stuff for spaghetti. Like that could just be it. But it just seems very strange that you were making it on camera and you had a recipe book out and then you went while it was cooking and basically gave us a sob story about how much you desired kin, which now is looking a little bit like an incantation. So I don't know. Again, I have no idea if she used the spaghetti as a binding love spell or not, but it's looking kind of suspicious. It's looking suspicious, Gypsy. Do you want to tell us what's in the spaghetti? And if you're not following me, if you're not from the South and you don't know what I'm talking about, there are particular spells. And, and I thought maybe this is why I'm feeling the need to talk about this because I feel like a lot of men specifically need to know about this. Men in the South mostly do know about this. But first of all, if you're dating somebody or if you're around somebody that you're a little unsure about, don't ever accept food or drinks from them just to be on the safe side. Because there are certain binding spells that you can do. They're very intense binding spells to keep somebody bound to you. These involve bodily fluids. And I don't... For women, one of the biggest differences between a man and a woman is that women can have babies. Our whole biological makeup revolves around our uterus. 
when a woman is not pregnant, she detoxes once a month. It's her cycle, right? I'm trying to be vague because of YouTube. So things come out of her. Red stuff comes out of her. You see where I'm going with this? There are certain very intense binding spells where you take that said red stuff and you cook it into food. Most commonly, the food that it's cooked into is a pasta dish like spaghetti. Yeah, this happens a lot. This is a disgusting spell. This is definitely black magic. This is not white magic because you are forcing somebody to be addicted to you against their own free will choice. So with that bodily fluid being ingested, it creates a chemical attraction and pull to the person whose DNA matches that fluid. Does that make sense? And I think that's why on TikTok, especially a lot of Southern women started to speak up because this should not be this. I mean, we all have certain choices to make in this life. As you guys know, I'm also a student of the law of one. Are you going to be service to self or are you going to be service to others? And doing something like that is definitely service to self because you are disregarding the other person's feelings. What I find interesting, too, is that if if Gypsy did this, this is just speculation. I don't know if she did or not. This is just my opinion. It just kind of looks suspicious. What she's doing is entrapping Ken. Isn't it interesting that she claimed that she had to unalive her mother because her mother entrapped her? held her in the house, wouldn't let her leave. So she had to unalive her mother. But if, because it looks super suspicious, if she's doing this to Ken through magic, girl, you're doing the same thing. And that's not fair. Ladies and men who are doing this shit, why the hell would you want to be with somebody if you have to do magic to get them to be attracted to you, isn't that a little pathetic? I would rather be alone than be with a man that I had to trick into being with me. I want to be with a man who wants to be with me because it's his free will choice to be with me. How would you like it if somebody was doing that to you? Now, men especially listening, ladies too, if you're not from the South, if you're, if you're dealing with somebody in your life, like if you're in a relationship with somebody and it's super toxic and you want to end the relationship, but you just feel this crazy like draw to be with this person, it, there is a possibility that there has been some type of binding spell done on you like this. Now, it could also be a possibility that you just have some toxic traits and you just need to go to therapy. So if you're kind of dealing with somebody in your life that you can't seem to quit, but you need to quit because it's unhealthy for you and it's your life is falling apart because of it, the first thing I would suggest is therapy. Just make sure that it's not something in you. Um, but if, if therapy isn't working and it's still getting worse, um, the way to get out of it, the way to break a binding spell like that is you need to actually work with like a root doctor or a voodoo mamba. You're going to have to find somebody in your area that can actually help you because you're going to have to break it. And I'm not going to get into specifics of what that in entails, breaking a spell like that. It's pretty intense though. I've never had to do it um, myself, but I know... I know about it. I know, I know people who have had to do it. I'm not, again, I'm not going to get specifics. I'm not, I'm not a voodoo priestess. I'm not a root doctor. Um, so I, that's not my place, but I would highly suggest finding one if you think that that's been done to you. 
And knowledge is power and knowledge protects. So now that you know that this shit exists, that people do this, especially desperate women will do this. Just be aware, be aware of, of what you receive from people, be aware of food that you receive from people. I think some men like it when women cook for them. But if you don't know that woman, if you're not 100% trusting of that woman, then maybe your best bet when you're just dating is to go out to eat somewhere. Give it time so that that woman can kind of, you know, if, 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 if the relationship isn't toxic and you like the person and you're growing in your relationship organically, then, you know, she can cook for you because it's probably going to be pretty safe because there's no need for her to do anything like that. But the relationship is toxic and you're trying to get out of it and then you have food from her. There's no telling what's in it. So anyway, guys, I was not literally was not going to even talk about this, but I just felt this nagging need to like do a PSA. I think it's a good example for, for men, especially to be aware. And again, as I'm telling you guys, this is serious. This kind of a, a binding love. There are all sorts of love spells out there. Don't do any of them, guys. Do not do a fucking love spell. That is, again, that's pathetic. But there's some that are less invasive than others. Um, this is one of the most invasive ones. And this is one of the most uh, advanced binding spells, love bind binding spells. So you definitely need help to get yourself out of it. And it's not it's not going to be as simple as just like walking away from the person because you can't because you're chemically addicted to that person now. And that was not done by your consent. Um, and so that sucks. But there is a way to reverse it and revoke it. You just need to work with somebody who knows how to do that. So anyway, guys, um, yeah, if you guys want me to do more voodoo episodes, I'll be more than happy to. Just let me know down in the comment section below. Again, videos are going to still be a little bit sparse. We're still working on our panel for uh, Gnostic TV. If you're interested in the cult, speaking of love spells and binding spells, if you're interested in the occult, especially the darker side of the occult, which is something we do need to study because we need to be aware of it. We have, again, a panel going on on Gnostic TV in a couple of weeks. Uh, this panel is a bunch of people who have survived dark witchcraft, dark occult stuff, and they're going to be telling their stories. It's a huge panel. We also have people who um, have researched the occult, and it will be over on Gnostic TV. There's going to be a link below for tickets. There's a 50% off coupon for tickets. Um, follow that link below if you want to get tickets to that event so you can listen to all these panel, these people on our panelists speak about their experiences. Of course, we have to do it on a different platform because of the rules and regulations of YouTube. We would never be able to do this on YouTube. So anyway, you guys, if you have more questions about that, just ask me down in the comment section below and yeah give me your thoughts and your opinions please watch what you write the words you write in the comment section but give me your thoughts and your opinions on the spaghetti that gypsy rose made what do you think do you think it's just spaghetti or do you think are you from the south and were you like me like when i first saw the video i was like girl no you didn't girl no you didn't you didn't girl you didn't just do what i think you did so let me know down in the description box below what your thoughts are again these are all my opinions these are not this is not fact is not fact this is just my own speculation and i thought i could use it as an example to kind of talk about the dangers of not being educated in witchery all right you guys i hope you're having a wonderful day i'll talk to you soon